name is Patrizia Casaccia. I'm the director of the Neuroscience Initiative at the Advanced Science Research Center and professor of biology and biochemistry at the Graduate Center of the City University of New York. I would like to thank you today for watching the video abstract for our manuscript, which was recently published in Brain and entitled A Metabolic Perspective on CSF-Mediated Neurodegeneration in Multiple Sclerosis. The question that we are trying to address in this manuscript is to try to understand what are the causes for neurodegeneration. We know that multiple sclerosis is an inflammatory demyelinating disorder of the central nervous system and that in some patients the course is progressive, leading to increasing neurological disability over time. So the question that we are trying to address in this manuscript is to understand what are the differences in the cerebral spinal fluid of patients with the course which is progressive compared to those with the course which is relapsing and limiting. So the premise for this work is based on the fact that damaged neurons in MS are often detected in brain regions which are in direct contact with the cerebrospinal fluid. And what you can see here is a scheme on the left side or a, an example of a lesion in the brain of a multiple sclerosis patient has detected at the MRI on the right. So in order to understand what are the mechanisms, we adopted what we call a xenogenic approach in the sense that we dissected neurons from rats, plated them in cultured dishes, and exposed them to the cerebrospinal fluid from multiple sclerosis patients with a different course of the disease. We then also labeled the energy-producing organelles or neurons, which are called mitochondria, with a green fluorescent dye called mitotracker and performed live imaging. What you can appreciate in this slide are green round mitochondria detected in the neurons that were exposed to the cerebral spinal fluid of patients with a relapsing remitting form of the disease. So compare the previous appearance with the appearance of those mitochondria in neurons exposed to the cerebral spinal fluid from patients with a primary progressive form of the disease. Or also with the appearance of mitochondria in neurons that were exposed to the cerebral spinal fluid from patients with a secondary progressive form of the disease. And as I am sure you can appreciate, the elongated mitochondria are detected in both kinds of neurons that were exposed to patients with deteriorating clinical disability. Now, this type of mitochondria morphology is typically detected in cells which are exposed to situations of high energy demand, suggesting that the cerebral spinal fluid from patients with a progressive disease course induces a high energy demand in the cultured neurons. Elongated mitochondria are characteristically detected in cells where more energy is required, and it is an attempt of the cells to produce more energy. We therefore asked whether or not the neurons that were exposed to the cerebral spinal fluid from MS progressive patients were indeed capable of generating more energy. And using a number of techniques involving biochemical determination or seahorse determination, we showed that despite the changes in morphology, those mitochondria were incapable of producing more ATP. To understand what could be the potential cause for this effect on the bioenergetic, we performed the first experiment to rule out the possibility that would be a protein. A protein can be inactivated by heat treatment, by heating the samples. And we showed here that the cerebral spinal fluid still retained the ability to induce this elongated morphology, even though it was exposed to heat. So this completely ruled out the possibility there could be a toxic protein in the cerebral spinal fluid that was responsible for the effect. We then asked whether or not the potential factor could be a lipid, and in order to do that, we conducted what we called an unbiased lipidomic analysis, which revealed an interesting lipid called ceramide, and C24 stands for the length of carbon moiety, ceramide C24, as elevated in the cerebral spinal fluid of patients with a progressive disease course compared to 
the levels detected in patients with a relapsing remitting course. So where is this ceramide coming from? There are a number of sources that one can think of, including diet or the gut microbiota, and uh, myelin damage itself, which is formed of lipids. So this increased ceramide will stimulate the neurons to respond to the, to the toxic insult that they present. And this is why we detected before this mitochondria elongating and fusing. At the same time, the neurons also respond to the ceramide treatment by increasing the transporters for glucose and lactate in an attempt to import more of those fuel from the outside. At the same time, being unable to produce uh, energy, this creates a local situation of further energy impairment, eventually leading to damage. This induced us to consider the possibility that uh, the bioenergetic defect and the axonal damage could be rescued by the supplementation with sufficient glucose and lactate at the early stages of damage itself. And this indeed turned out to be the case. When neurons were exposed to glucose, you can see that we could prevent the morphological elongation of the mitochondria and we could prevent the damage. So these results were quite exciting, although we need to make sure that we consider that they're still very preliminary as uh, the sample size was very small and the data were obtained using rat neurons. I would like to also thank all the people who contributed to the study. Uh, the, the Advanced Science Research Center, the lead author was Maureen Wentling at uh, the ICANN School of Medicine, Ilana Katzand, and uh, at Columbia University, Katerina Quincy. And I would like to acknowledge the support of the congressionally directed medical research program of the Department of Defense. Thank you.